Welcome back to Kirby's Dream Land 2. We're gonna go grab all those rainbow drops. In there's one per world, and the one in world one is in stage three. So you are required to pass through this room in order to get here. And you need parasol in order to break those blocks. Which is pretty easy to get. Because you can just go through this door, and in the next room, there's a an umbrella right there. You do, however, need a friend of some form. I'm not sure a, if Koo would work. I don't know what Koo's umbrella looks like. But Rick or Kine should both be able to break that. And then if you exit... Do you keep it if you exit? You do! Because you can see right there on the world map that it indicates we have it. So here it's in the stage 2. And from 2, drop straight down at the entrance. And here you are. You need spike in order to break this one. There is no spike in this level, so you just have to come back with it. I don't have a great any great advice on where to get spike, other than stage two of world seven. You have to go through the bit of a slog at the start, but it has every ability in that level. World 3, Stage 3. Gonna need Fish Boy for this one. And you're gonna need Stone, which you can get right here in the level. So I believe it is in this door, where there is... You actually need the light bulb in order to see the invisible door. There it is. But once you get in here, you need rock in order to break this. Stage four. You also need fire, which you get right at the beginning of the stage from the mini boss. Now you just have to hold on to these for a while. This one is a bit dangerous. With fire, burn these blocks here in the center. And now we still need fire. That may not have been enough for us to fit through, but... There we go. Now we can fight the currents, get through the door, get down here with fire. And there's our jam. Level 5, Stage 5. Gonna need Rick for this one. You're also going to need electricity, so you can get that right here in the stage. Do 
not go in the first door. Instead, go in the second door. Where you can now break those blocks. And unfortunately, we can't make that jump with Rick. Level six, stage two. You need Kine for this one, the fish. I can't believe I've been mixing up Kine and Koo this entire time. And it does not matter what ability you come in with because you are very quickly going to have to ditch it for ice in order to progress through the stage. The ability combination in this stage isn't necessarily difficult to obtain, it's getting there. So from these wavy platforms, the highest one goes straight down, and through the door. Head to the left against the current. And now we need... I did it, I kept it. So you're back in the second room with electricity. Go through the door yet again, only this time we're going right. Another mini-boss. There we go. You do not want Rock. Keep the ability you have. Instead, take Rick and a much-needed health repo. Use the ability you have to break the blocks under the shots. And out from that comes... Koo! Getting it right. I'm getting it right. Grab Koo! Now that you have Koo, fight the wind! Relatively easy as it turns out, but you want that ability. Go through the door, which takes you back. Now don't use your bill lose your ability. You need that. And now we have Cutter here. And this all made possible by forcing you to get ice at the start of the stage, and then the only place with Cutter is hidden behind a place that you can only get to with Koo. Which you can only get to with Rick and Electric. And etc, etc. Stage seven, last stage. I do not think it matters if you have, an, have a friend or not, but your goal is to come here to this room with several different abilities. 
Grab one. Specifically, fire. And you go up, and you see two blocks. One can be destroyed by, I think that was Parasol, and one by fire. And then do it again. So this time, what we need is stone. There's not really a good way to figure this one out, aside from... Guess and check, I suppose. And then we do it again. Next up, we're looking for... Needle. Get rid of that, and the next one we're looking for is ice. And after ice, I'm doing this because I don't want to accidentally... I don't want my star to cause any problems with anything. Uh, lastly is... our final rainbow drop, and one up. Bonus chance. Not really sure what I'm trying to accomplish here. It's a bonus game. Don't get hit by apples, I guess. Not looking forward to getting hit by an apple, I have no health left. So whenever you beat one of the bosses, if you go back in, you get to play a bonus game. And I think in order to get 100% on your save file, you have to get a perfect score on all of the bonus games. I'm not going to worry about getting a perfect score, but I'll at least show them off. Oh, and it ends as soon as you get hit at all. Um, I'm willing to bet that blocks off, but if you load a save, it opens back up again. Kind of like in Kirby's Adventure, where you could play minigames more than once, but only once per save mode. Okay, so just don't get hit. Get stars, don't get hit. You can get a lot of lives this way if you get a perfect. How many lives did I get against Wispy? Oh, that was the whole stage, though. Okay, this one wasn't as big a deal. That Wispy one felt like it went on forever. So there are mini-games, though. Oh, it like, didn't feel like a Kirby game without mini-games in it. I don't know what happens if a star hits the ground. Oh, it bounces. So I'm not out of luck if I miss it. 
I mean, it probably goes away pretty quick. Same as the spikes. Also, these intro cinematics only play each time you load your save. I don't like this one. No, I don't like this one. Shouldn't the moon be the one dropping stars on me? Well, at least, like, kind of all the bosses are playing with you now. Come on. This one's kind of fun. I like this one. I just love these little tiny crackos. Just have to watch your feet, mostly. In case one tries to come up from underneath you. Getting perfect on these doesn't seem too hard, either. I'm willing to bet going into the final boss's arena still just takes you to the final boss. And then you go fight the final boss again! I wonder if they're gonna make me fight the whole final boss again. It'd be real nice if they knew that I beat it once and they just cut me straight to me beating it. Cutter worked out well for me before. Just gotta play it safe. Watch him, watch what he's doing. So I've also realized that Kirby has his own health bar, independent of his animal friends. Jeez! I knew that was coming! God dang it! Got him! On the rebound! I can fly through the air. It's a little slow. Mm. 
dude has a crap ton of health. Just need to figure out what you're doing. Looks like you only have a handful of attacks. Okay, you either have an obscene amount of health, or there's something I'm missing. Maybe I'm better off playing defensively? That's how you get your damage in. Yeah, just don't stand directly across from him. Or you get hit with a laser. thing again where I can hurt you? That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Eat it! gonna keep doing this. Hope it works. Nope, it didn't work. Thank you. 
Hey. And it was all our little puffball had. Oh, that's beautiful. It was a matter of learning, and going through the first phase of the fight several times over was a little troublesome. Um, with the... With the actual... the second part of the fight, I found, more often than not, you just want to stay behind him. Like, if he's on the right side of the screen, get on the right edge of the screen and hack at him from behind. There's only a small handful of moves he can do that can hurt you um, while he's doing- while you're like that. One of which is he kind of flies around the screen, just bouncing around everywhere and ends up going towards the left. Like, that pattern resets himself on the left. That one's not so bad, because I think he always goes up, and I just instinctively always go down as soon as I start to see him moving. So I move off to the left, and then he bounces around, and he makes his way over to the left where I am. The other one is... He shoots out all the little... Uh, shots in a spin around himself, but he does have a tell for that, which is he spins around a couple times before he starts shooting. As soon as he's doing that, you don't have time to get away and dodging them is kind of hard, though it seems like there's a safe spot in the lower corners of the screen where that attack doesn't hit you. So as soon as he sees, you see him spin around, just get to that corner. Um, the last one is... It's like the black lightning he shoots out. But I think you're still safe as long as you get on the right-hand side of him, and I just didn't. But that's Kirby's Dream Land 2. This is the beginning of what is known as the Dark Matter trilogy. Because it introduced, as a final villain, Dark Matter. I think Dark Matter is probably my favorite of all of the Kirby enemies, if only because of its eldritch nature. Like, even what we saw here, what is it doing? What's its goal? What's it even trying to accomplish? We learned nothing about what it actually was itself, just that it had taken over DDD. And even then, DDD was asleep. So who really knows what its actions were trying to do? We didn't get any dialogue. We really didn't even get a face with emotion to put to it. Just 
kind of a mysterious knightly being at first, and then a black orb with an eyeball. And that's all we got. We got no emotion, no intention. Even with Nightmare, you got the impression that... Okay, his name's Nightmare. He's trying to make Dreamlanders either fall asleep or whatever. And then, like, feed off their nightmares. Some, something like that. I forget exactly what that deal was. But, like, you get that impression. But, like, Dark Matter, you don't really get anything. I don't think you ever really get anything. It's just... there. And it being there is detrimental to you. I love Dark Matter. Anyway, that's it for Kirby's Dreamland 2. Until next time, everyone.